outside the box of religious obligation lies a road less travelled, into the heart of the Father's affection. Slinging freedom all over the place, this is the God Chain. The God Chain. The God Chain. Well, I did it. <laughs> you did uh, your recommendation. Yeah. Oh, wait, wait a minute. You're yeah. implicating me. You told something. me to go see Wonder Woman. Wow. It was powerfully <laughs> transformative. And I know this is a long payoff. No, this no, was no, no, eight no, no, weeks no, no, ago. No, no, the truth is, I did not tell you to go see yeah. it. I said yes. I enjoyed it. Let's go back to the tape. <laughs> Play it. I'm pretty sure I didn't ask you because. Dude. 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 You got to go see Wonder Woman. No. Yeah, you do. No. You do. And it was no. awesome. <laughs> nice. <laughs> I I know when I really like it, it was really moved. You rarely do. No, that's not true. <laughs> oh. Now I told you. Oh, no. I told you comic <laughs> when movies. When it comes to movies and anything that is like that's not Marvel true. Based, no. Well, okay, you now we're Marvel. Now we're talking comic book movies. I find them absurd. To you the didn't max. like Avatar, and I loved it. I know. You didn't understand what I saw. I, I just love scripture so much more. <laughs> <laughs> no, we okay. Sarah and I three days after you okay. read it. So this is like a so, long time ago. So you're not sitting here in your Wonder Woman outfit. So I'm guessing you <laughs> did not feel Thursday. the way I thought about it. <laughs> oh, wow. No, I, I didn't hate it. <laughs> oh, that's a, ladies and gentlemen, he didn't hate it. That's good. I, I think I think the thing about did you I, like it better than Mark Zuckerberg. Uh, <laughs> never met Mark Zuckerberg, so it's hard to say. No, I, I, you know, it's, uh, <laughs> okay. Tell me what you thought. Well, I, I get the story and I get for love trying to save the world from its disgusting self and from the principalities <laughs> and powers and the high forces of the devil or whatever. But seriously, when, once people start getting thrown through asphalt, getting a big asphalt pile and, and get up again and, start, and then they're throwing bullets, they're throwing missiles and airplanes you don't at each find other. That, like believable? I don't find that even remotely interesting. Plus, here you've got fun. a whole race of fun. women on an island whose sole purpose is to help humanity not be destroyed by their own stupidity. And when they needed them the most, only one went. Yeah, no. The rest of like, well, hey, nigga. Right? See, there's a profound message in that. <laughs> there is a profound It's not fun. No, but it's kind of. They build these devices, and then that's why I find about the comic book world, and I realize I'm a minority of one, but the comic book world is such a contrived reality. And then you have to move that reality, right? You have to have it, why all these women who have been training for centuries to go but fight. These are not gospel direct analogies written by believers who are trying to I, tell stories. I was that not way. even looking for that. Okay. I was looking for a pleasant movie experience where I feel like the twenty seven dollars I spent for this movie <laughs> oh, and was then, well isn't that spent. Crazy, it's like wow, man. <laughs> and that was just the what? diet coke. I had nothing to do with that. No, I'm kidding. No, we we went and saw it just because you you recognize that's how much I respect. Hi, thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. <laughs> it's not gonna hold water because you'll come back liking them. I no, actually I dislike it. That's a I pretty good I enjoyed it. Comic book movie. I get it. And it, I enjoyed it, and it was fun to watch my daughter and just go like, you know what. Most of growing up, there aren't any big um, female heroines, and it was it was fun to just see the sense of empowerment of going like, "Hey, do you think you could be a sorcerer?" Good. No, I, I'm serious. It was a blast. I was going like, "Come on!" I told my women to man up. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure that was helpful to them. I, so I, I, I didn't grow up in a world where That's women, where women know, didn't have as much but... opportunity to save the world as men. I just didn't grow up in that world. So I, I don't know what you're talking about. I'll give a shout out to April, though. A friend okay. of mine from the East Coast, he wrote and he said, my daughter, my eldest daughter lives in South Korea teaching ESL, but she's very alone. No Christians where she is. Only fellowship is in a church in Seoul an hour away. Thought you'd want to know this. Her main source of encouragement these days is listening to the God Journey podcasts every morning she started at the beginning as going through one a day oh my goodness yeah my goodness that april would, so i give a shout out to april that would you may not hear this for the 10 years since you're working back from the that, beginning but. that would take you almost two years an hour a day yeah it would we're approaching 600 That's of those puppies crazy well yeah you're in korea wow. i've talked to you 600 times Probably the only people <laughs> wow that, Oh, it's been a lot more than that. Wow. Remember that 12-hour yes, drive we had to yes, San Francisco? Yes, <laughs> Didn't record a bit of it. <laughs> Talked forever. Got this from Andrew. By the way, I'm Wayne Jacobson. I'm 
Brad Cummings. That's Brad Cummings. And I liked Wonder Woman. Keep the voices straight, because I hate when I get email that says, <laughs> oh, you said this. I'm going, no, I didn't. Brad Your said knucklehead that. knucklehead said that. Right, Brad. No, there sometimes it's good stuff, but I yeah, still sometimes. want credit for the good stuff. <laughs> And Andrew from Canada wrote this, friend of mine. So I was thinking about what you said about forgiveness, how it seemed to be unnecessary if the cross was curative rather than punitive, which I don't think that's what huh? we said. <laughs> you lost me how there. It seemed, well, I think that was the question we were asked. Okay. But anyway, I'm giving Okay, okay. I'll throw out a thought here. My experience with relationship, whether human or divine, is that the best ones are vigorous. They require a huge amount of effort. I believe, as you put it, that a legal system is dichotomous, fractious, and easy. And that someone else makes a decision to determine how the relationship will be realized. The resulting situation is either acceptable or not. It's lazy. Real relationship is an ongoing give and take that necessarily pulls one into a closer kinship. It doesn't. Re it does require forgiveness. I think there sometimes needs to be a spirit of forgiveness, or at least letting go of personal goals in the interest of the better outcome. Good twist Ooh, on forgiveness, nice. right? Yeah. I have had a, I've had to forgive my Lord and Father, or at least set aside my first choice to align my thoughts and desires to where He is leading. That's good. I've had to forgive the Father for my expectations about what align my <laughs> it's a thoughts. A little to twisted, but I, I I can follow. I follow. Yeah, I actually, can follow. Actually, you're forgiving yourself <laughs> for having the expectation. Say, I think forgiveness is the direct opposite of judgment. It is in the humility and self extension that relationship is restored or preserved. I think that's what Father really wants. I don't think so. Okay. If judgment is setting things right, how is forgiveness the opposite? I think he means judgment in the religious sense of in the I want to yeah, yeah, yeah. retribution. Right. I think that's how he means it. I forgiveness so. is the opposite of retribution. I would I would go there. Yeah, I think that's what he's trying to say. Okay. Because it isn't humility and self extension that relationship is restored or preserved. I think this yeah, is what the father I don't means. know that this is profound, but if if you look at forgiveness, it is to give for. I'm putting something into play that was missing. That was very much needed. And because it was not there, damage occurred. And to not hold that against that person, but to hand that situation and them over to the righteous judge, who is probably the only one that's going to have the perspective to really understand everything there. Yeah. That's what that's what I'm doing. I'm, I'm releasing that person from my retributive judgment. Yeah. But I like what he said about relationships being vigorous and they're taking – effort to make yeah. a relationship work. You've got to keep moving towards each other. Yeah. Sarah and I, 42 years into marriage, we're still moving towards each other. We still are. We're yeah. still finding out that, man, this is, I, I respond wrongly to this or she responds wrongly in a way and we're talking about it. And it's not, you're wrong. You need to do what I want. I need to move toward who you really are and you're moving to who I really am. And some yeah. of that, our expectations get slapped around a bit. And a good relationship is a vigorous Give and take. I, I like that. I like the whole. Yeah, I think that's that's where we, we do have a genuine pursuit of God. There is a there is a forward momentum in my heart that says, God, I want to intentionally go after you. And we had that discussion. Remember when we were working on the shack about getting into relationships with people is how God wants to resolve conflict and how we, into, how we always want to put it into systems. And I liked what he said about how lazy systems are. Someone gets to decide what's right or wrong and gets to compel it on the other person. And if the other person wants to have a relationship, they have to go along as a victim rather than the give and take of an honest relationship. So I, I went and read a little bit about that part of it from the shack uh, this is Papa talking. When you choose independence over relationship, you become a danger to each other. Others became objects to others become objects to manipulate or manage for your own happiness. Authority, as you usually think of it, is merely the excuse the strong use to make others conform to what they want. Yeah, isn't that good? I, boy, we did good there. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that. It's weird reading your own words sometimes, but. Uh, <laughs> and then it said this a little bit further down. It said, lies are little fortresses inside them. You can feel safe and powerful through your little fortress of lies. You try to run your life and manipulate others, but the fortress needs walls. So you build them. There are justifications for your lies. You know, like you're doing this to protect someone you love, to keep them from feeling pain, whatever works just so you feel okay about the lies. Yeah, I mean, it seems as if human beings have supernatural powers of rationalization. 
Yeah. We really are super super heroes for ourselves in terms of being able to what we can justify. Yeah. Even and, and the more I try to justify something, the more I tend to find out maybe that wasn't such a great choice. Yeah. You know how many times I've been wronged for my own good? It's it's, it's amazing. <laughs> and, and were you delightfully told about that? I had a guy actually, a, a, a couple I know, and uh, he had had an affair on his wife and actually wrote her a letter saying, God wanted this to happen. You you needed, <laughs> listen to this. Oh, twisted. Okay. For you to be the woman God wants you to be to rescue you people, you need to know betrayal deeper than any other person has known betrayal. And even though I didn't want to sleep with this woman, we were both knew God told us to do it for your good. What? Oh, my gosh. Oh, please. I, no. Ah. Turns out, fortunately, the brother, so who, messed up. Yeah, the brother who wrote that, turns out that uh, there was some deep demonic deception that got revealed. And addressed through you all think? that. And yeah, but it got revealed and addressed. I think that's fabulous. Yeah. So that's moving on to something Ugh. better. But yeah. Yeah. And then this from Mike by email. He says, you recent comments on the fruit of focusing on outcomes of, in our spiritual life rather than focusing on living loved in relationship with God is just the most recent helpful food for thought from the podcast. Yeah. And he said, you and Brad speak a lot about how many, how many Christians fear being whacked by God as as it, by God, if they tick him off, he's quoting whacked and tick him off. Okay. And I, I was thinking that's probably more me than you. Yeah, that's, I was going to say, oh, that's a way word. Whacked is a terminology I use, but that, that's how we grew up. Yeah, you don't want to get whacked by God. You speak of many interpreting the bad things that happen in their life as God punishing them. I get that, and I agree wholeheartedly with your perspective. But for me, that has never really been a fear or view of God that has a strong influence in my life in relationship with God. The prevalent worldview held by those in my recent church, quote, unquote, experience, is that bad things happen in our life because the devil or his minions are at work resisting the good that God has for us. Therefore, bad things don't happen so much due to God punishing us, but because the devil wants us to experience, does not want us to experience the goodness of God. Therefore, if something does not go favorably for me or others, then I need to do spiritual warfare to remove the devil's influence and or power over the situation that God's will can be released. This usually surrounds issues of health, healing, provision, favor, and frustrating annoyances in my life or the lives of others. There's this idea that God has this pantry in heaven that has all good things God wants me to have, but there's an evil demonic brute barring my access to what is already mine, so I need to get the brute out of the way. So he's asking us. Isn't that what the cross did? Well, we're still we're still doing it, <laughs> I guess. <laughs> Yeah, and I've I've got this actually from a couple of people. It's one of the person who wrote see, me similarly saying, see, I don't... you here it is. Let me just read this and then we'll have it okay. all in. Jonathan wrote from a much longer email. He said, I know God loves me, but I scared that unless I am in his will, then the devil will have power over me and take my stuff from me. How can I learn to live in God's will? Huh. Those two letters came in a day apart, which was interesting. Okay. Email. Yeah. And the one goes on. One's a very long email, and I don't have time to read it all. And there's some really wonderful things he says about the podcast in there. But basically, he says he's asking for us: How much do you and I focus on the devil, the devil, or worry about the devil, or seek to address him in some specific way? You know, that's that's interesting because I do have in my background a number of years uh, invested in the whole deliverance ministry. There was a whole as a specialty, or just as an occasional. Kind of, no, kind. Of, I mean, it was when I was out at Fuller. Were you a demon of, chaser, dude? Uh, not so much a demon chaser, demon kicker. Do you carry a bucket so we would throw up in that sucker? No, no, okay. we didn't quite do it that. So way, you weren't but, serious then, you know, a bucket. No, no I was picked in the parlor. You got to have a bucket. I I know that we took authority over that, so we'd forbid them from being able to throw up like that. It's too much cleanup. Yeah, yeah. That's why we did stop it. No, stop, um, stop chucking up. The the bulk of. Deliverance stuff I did was uh, on a whole bunch of seminary folks, students, and Christians aren't supposed to have demons. I'm like, well, this crowd didn't hear that. <laughs> they, so what you're saying is Fuller Seminary <laughs> had a lot of demons teaching in it. I had, I had a wonderful professor who's from the School of World Mission, great lover of Jesus, and had also learned an awful lot about um, authority in the realm of casting out demons and um, healing broken people. 
and saw a ton of that and, and spent three, four years focusing, doing seminars, going around the country, doing that stuff, teaching others how they can help people find freedom. And there's an awful lot of great stuff in there. But I also recognize the, the deeper you got into that, it seemed like the more aware someone was of what the devil was doing, as opposed to being aware of all that God was doing. And I started to go like, I don't, this is a good, helpful dynamic in the tool bag of loving up and learning to pray for people. But this isn't the only thing. And I'm kind of going like, where is, where is God in all of this? Because it didn't seem like the more bushes you were looking, the more demons you were finding. And was there a demon behind every bush? A bunch. (laughs) (laughs) it it sort of it sort of was it genuine yeah yeah i mean the the reality is are you doing as much of it today not not and why not what would be the difference i think i started to see a bunch of people that that was their like ministry focus and a lot of their lives ultimately um got sifted and they ended up in some real horrible failure and i started to just go like you know what? I think I don't really want to get into the deep things of Satan and be some demon expert. I want to be a Jesus expert. I want to I want to spend more of my time aware of what God is doing and what what his activity is than being preoccupied because so much of that deliverance ministry almost felt like a reverse pharisaical legalism. It's like whatever legal loophole the devil could find would be be the way he could get it you know, access into my life and just going like, gosh, I, I certainly hope it's not down to that kind of minutia because I don't see how anybody can walk in freedom and never stumble. I mean, if, 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 if the slightest little sin opens a door and that means you can have a demonic influence, you know, that gets a little much. Yeah. And I, you know, I'm, I have a similar story to yours. When I was 16, my dad was dragging me into demonic encounters when he couldn't find anybody else to go with him. Hey, come on, you come on with me kids. One brother was in the service, and the other brother was going to college, and so it was down to me helping him out. And uh, so we we came very aware. When I was a pastor, we often, I'd say often, maybe five, six times a year, had somebody with some kind of demonic manifestation. I mean, we didn't major on it. We didn't talk about it. I think the term deliverance ministry makes you want to hurl a little bit because it, <laughs> it just kind of puts the focus, I could, think. Could be a demon. I'll take authority. Yeah, over it. Oh, good. <laughs> yeah, it could be. Get me a bucket. <laughs> Call Sarah. Um but yeah, it was somewhat uh, a part of life. It is still when I travel occasionally, we run into something that needs a little more of a hit. But I don't, and this was a knock, I think, on the shack. People talked about this. No, there's no reference to the devil in the shack. We never brought him up. Um, don't we? What do you call the great sadness? <laughs> well, we didn't call it Satan. That was the problem. We could call it the Satan sadness. And then we would have brought well, him up. wanted to kill him? It was personified. I mean, t- it, it, in in my perspective on that, darkness was there. Yeah, yeah. And I think there was a sense of going like, if what we're trying to do is teach people about the love of God, I don't really know that focusing on the minutia of gee, where do you find Satan in all this is is necessarily because well, God there... is God is an almighty, Satan isn't. Well, yeah, but it's not necessarily the minutia. It might be the major usha. Uh, you know, just just do we focus on it at all now in my life? I, I, I do, I but, don't, but not, not to a preoccupation. Yeah, when I'm praying for things in my life, when Sarah's going through what she's going through, my thought first is not, this is the devil and we need to rebuke him and all our efforts go there. I, I look at it as it's just a broken part of the creation. We're in it. Uh, could it be caused by the devil? Sure, it could be. But I'm going to want some inside impetus inclination yeah. that that's what's going on yeah, here i usually I ask jump to that conclusion i first. usually ask it's like hey you know lord wh- how do i posture myself here is this is this demonic interference is this you know some attack is there something here is there something that i can do because yeah I, I, that was the question less I exorcisms can take, as just i can take how authority much the devil... over the enemy i wish frankly it was more the devil because you can cast him out and we do have authority over him. I don't actually think that that's the hard one. It's the problem when you can't cast out a contrary will in somebody. 
Yeah, or we try and cast out the flesh. Or you just, yeah. <laughs> and you can gag on that as much as you want. <laughs> yeah. It's not coming out. Well, I mean, I, I, I look at, you know, without, without getting lost in the end times, I look at the whole bit of the millennium where, you know, Satan is and, and all of his minions are, they're locked up and they're not a part of the equation. And you still have humanity going weird. I, I think it's like, it. I think you end up going like, well, I guess we can't just blame this on the devil. There is the human will and its waywardness. And in the way it gets, and it's like. Well, isn't that what, what are you talking about? During the millennial, things get screwed up? Yeah. Or are you talking about after, afterwards and the devil's released for a short time? Yeah, but, but for a period of time, he's bound and he's not. He's, he's not there. He's not there. But there's not a problem. You think humanity's having wars and that kind of stuff? During they that do time? start to work in rebellion. Where do you read this? In the Bible. <laughs> Sure it's interpretive I, stuff. Okay. No, I mean, I'm not sure. I don't know that I'm everyone's sure in agreement on all that, but I, I look yeah. at for, for Jesus Christ on the planet ruling and reigning for a thousand years. It does seem like that that does ultimately culminate in a battle at the end of that. Yeah, because the devil's released again and people get deceived by him again. That's how I recall it. We'd have to. It, it, well, we, we'll, that, God for forbid, we're going to pull out podcast. a Bible on the podcast. That's, that's for a future podcast. <laughs> have to do some research there. Yeah, do, yeah. We, no, no, but, but I look at that and I just go like, okay, you know, it's not Flip Wilson's "The Devil Made Me Do It." Even if the devil suggested and coerced and, and, and influenced you, the truth is, you agreed with him at some point. I don't get to just blame stuff on the devil. Yeah, I don't think that's what the question is, but I get it. No, but but that's for me why it's like there's not the constant focus of, okay, it's the devil, it's the devil, the devil. It's like, you know what? I think God is so much more powerful. The more I spend time in his presence, the less access the enemy has to me and, and to, to bother with stuff. I mean, it's not just resist the devil and he will flee. It's draw near to God, right. resist, and yeah. he will flee. And I just go like, after a season of time where there was the preoccupation of the resisting and the in the rebuking, and my my son Jonathan came up with just Dad, you can't rebuke him. You got to buke him first. <laughs> got to buke him. First. Yeah, got to. <laughs> How old was he? When he, he was four. <laughs> okay. That makes sense. So now. he he learned to buke and then rebuke. Oh, okay. Okay, because he did it twice. <laughs> Just going like, okay. okay. Semantic humor. <laughs> yes. Ha ha. So, <laughs> Through the eyes but, of a four-year-old. But I, I look at that and it's like the, the more aware I am of God, it seems as though the less concerned and frightened I am of all what the devil's up to do it. Right. But you don't have this fear that the devil could come and take stuff that you have. No, I don't live there. Or the first time calamity comes, you don't first of all think the devil's doing something. That is not my impulse. That's my mind either. I hear you. It, for a season of time, kind of was. But you moved away from it, so obviously yeah, it and, and, wasn't and, and, helpful and, and, or you falling into a reprobate mind, well, which means you had to probate first and then you're reprobating. <laughs> nice. Semantic <laughs> humor there. Yeah. You're quick. You're quick. Dude. I can so, learn late on a yeah. Tuesday afternoon. Um, the, what, what I began to see is Probably the two most helpful mentors in this, they both ended up in infidelity of their relationships. And I'm just going like, okay, what the heck? If you're, if you're so good, strong, powerful, and this is so central to everything. I mean, Jesus rebuked demons. He, he cast them out. So yeah, it's yeah. like, pardon me, like, no, this is part of the mix. But I just sat there going like, it seemed as if the more aware you are of the enemy, the bigger he seems to get. And they didn't have that same perspective on the largeness of God. And I just kind of went, I'm not liking the fruit of what that's doing in my own life. Right. And so I made a, I made a, um, a distinct choice to kind of just step back a little bit and go, this is good to have as part of the repertoire of when and where it's needed. But the love of God and the presence of God is so much more powerful. I mean, I, I remember. And uh, such a better focus. Yeah, I mean, I remember at one point I had some kids at a, at a conference and all of a sudden this girl starts going into some kind of epileptic fit that really did feel like a demonic manifestation. Yeah. And it freaked our entire group out. And so they just started, you know, in fear, praying up a storm. 
and almost using, you know, the gift of tongues like it was a machine gun, like they were shooting. And I'm just going like, it totally jacked up the whole situation, freaked out the girl too. And, sure. and, and pretty soon I just went, okay. Freaks me out just hearing it. I just, I said, does anyone know her name? It's like she wasn't part of our group and everyone's using their tongues machine gun on her. I'm just going like, can we just dial this back? Can we find out a little bit of what's going on here? That'd be the most scariest thing about being an epileptic, I think, is how many times people try and exercise you. Sure. (laughs) It would be. But she didn't have epilepsy. It was a demonic thing. Ah. But she got healed by us bringing clarity about the love of God for her. It was in a much more gentle, dialed down way. And I just sat there going like, I want to be more aware of that, Mm. of bringing God's love onto the scene than I do wanting to somehow exert my power and authority because I do end up going like, it's not my job to defeat the devil. It's my job to enforce a victory that's been won for us. I mean, I, I, end up, I look at the cross, I'm going like, that's where he was defeated. That's where his power yeah, he was, was disarmed and then. disarmed. And it seems like the only thing he's got now is to lie. And when you believe his lies, you give him weight. Yeah. And if you don't believe his lies, then you don't get He doesn't get have as much. But and so we both believe in a personal devil. Yes. We, we don't believe he's omnipresent in the way Jesus no. is, right? So we've probably never even seen Satan. That's why I like him adding or yeah, his I minions. I don't think he personally knows me. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I would hope not. I've told God, don't be boasting about me, nothing about the devil. I don't want you know, didn't work out too well for Job. So just shut your mouth when he's around. Oh, um, you, you talk to him to that way, do you? <laughs> I, I, I mentioned that to God. Just please. This was in my younger, you said, more oh, frivolous days. Oh, holy. I wouldn't have that. Shut thy mouth. I wouldn't have that conversation today. No, probably not. But um, so we both believe in it when when it's demonic oppression, possession is evident in someone's life. And for me, evident means that they've they've lost some sense of will. It's not willful. It's that somehow yeah, they're being taken th- their over. Their will is actually compromised and they yeah. genuinely are trapped and enslaved in some ways that they can't just choose. Right. But the larger question here, I think, was just the fear, not of God whacking me for sin, but that the devil has access. And I was even, I'm working on an article about covering, and because uh, it came up a lot in South, uh, South Africa. So I'm doing a little thing on That'll it. That'll be interesting. Yeah, it'll, it'll be kind of fun. But part of that is that if you're under your spiritual covering, which is always a, hier- a hierarchical authority structure, if you're under it, you're safe from the devil. If you're out from underneath your covering, now the devil gets to steal your stuff, no, make you sick, make your kids sick. I, I think what we have clear out of the book of Job is there is um, a hedge of protection around us. It's not complete. There was for Job. Yeah, I, I, I think what you see is the requisition from heaven saying, I... I'd like to get him, but you, you, you won't let me. And so there's a sense that there is some measure of protection. It was for Job. <laughs> so we, we, we can't extrapolate that for us. I, I, I don't know that it's fair to, it might be true for us, but that's not what it says. It says there was for Job. That's all I'm saying. Okay. <laughs> I, 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 I do think, you know, walking in that um, dimension of, as I walk in obedience, I'm saved. God is looking out for me. He has angels to um, guard me. I think we can ask for his protection. And I think we can be secure that the devil doesn't have a blank check on my life. I would look at his um, request to sift Peter. Do you spend time doing that? That's what um, Praying? And, no, and yeah. asking for that protection? Like, if we ever, ever go on a long trip when we were kids, my dad and mom would stop and pray that God would protect us. And if we didn't pray, then that's why people have accidents. They really believe that, which I don't. Well, on all of our trips, we do pray. Right. And I do regularly pray for God's um, protection. And, and uh, you know, to, I'm wanting to be spiritually alert about what's going on. Th- there is a devil. He says, we're supposed to be sober and vil- vigilant because we do have an enemy uh, uh, that, that is yeah. going around seeking for folks that, that he can devour. And I'm going like, well, I'm not wanting to be lion meat. You know, it's, it's so, so there is an awareness in my life 
Right, but is there a quid pro quo if I pray before a trip? I'm and say, and then what length of trip is important to pray before? <laughs> You're driving to my house for three miles. I didn't think about it driving to your house. I should okay, have. Yeah, yeah. I should have because now I'm Most encountering demonic trump. resistance. Most so, well, for me, <laughs> yeah. I didn't like. But your I'll cast there. that out in just a moment. I didn't like that finger pointing over here. <laughs> Let's do it live on the podcast. Yeah, like people would like to see that. <laughs> <laughs> you were hurling. I you know. Um, I I would say that I do have a general awareness of a need for a sober vigilance. I do, but I don't walk around with a sense of fear. And right, it's, and it's, it's not an incantation of if I say a no, prayer, I'm safe, and if I yeah, don't, the, I, don't. The whole, I mean, I agree with the whole general. Let's be vigilant. Let's uh, ask Lord's Prayer does deliver us from evil. Ask us to you know pray about keeping things at bay. I mean, while my kids are gone, I'm constantly um, aware and prayerfully for them. Yeah. And, 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 and that, that, that's a genuine nudge on the inside of just going like, how could that be harmful? If right. it was producing in me, which at, at times in a season, of, you know, season past, I sort of felt I was so aware of the enemy and I was doing that more sort of a reverse legalism of making sure that I had every basis covered. And I just sort of felt like I seem to be more aware of a much more powerful devil than I am resting in the care and the protection of God. And I'm just like, I don't think that's awesome. I don't think that's going to benefit me. Yeah. I think I'm going to be far more benefited by learning. And I remember, I think it was Jack Hayford that, that, that said this, you know, it's like he was talking about discerning and learning what the genuine is. And he mentioned that, you know, how did people learn to detect counterfeit money? Well, they didn't spend all this time studying counterfeit everything. They just spent a ton of time handling the real. Right. And because they were so intimately familiar with the real, they could quickly spot a counterfeit that didn't feel like that. And I don't know at the time, it really hit me. I went, man, I've been studying all the counterfeit. You know, I became an expert in all these false religions. And I just, just go like, I need to spend more of my time and energy becoming far more aware of what God was doing. And as I did, I found myself less fearful, less in that sort of religious legalism of, oh my gosh, is there an open door and have I, have I covered everything? And I found myself resting and trusting a whole lot more and just not being all that bothered by all the spiritual warfare or even feeling the impulse to do it as often as I used to. Yeah, that's where I've landed on the, on the whole thing, I think, is that I, I like to stay centered in Jesus and what's going on. When something bad happens to me, I don't make the assumption it's the devil. It could be. I'll pray about it. I'll listen to God about it. There's some nudge that I need to rebuke the devil. I will, but I don't think that's the fix all for every little broken place that comes to my life. I don't think I have to have this repetitive prayer every time I go somewhere or every bit of food I eat. And if I don't pray in some way, then something's unprotected by God. I'm not that, I don't, I don't view prayer as this kind of incantation that makes everything clean and clear. I do look at prayers that just that ongoing communication, openness to God and gratefulness for what I have, awareness that I want God's light and protection to be with me and my family. But I don't always go into full on spiritual warfare about even, I mean, Sarah's thing is a, is a good example. I've had a year we've been fighting all this physical stuff with her and we've We've had people pray for her. We've prayed for her. Um, I, 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 we've asked God if there's something of the enemy in here, then alert us to that because we'll we'll go to war there if that's what we need to do. I uh, haven't felt like that at all. And uh, But some people, you know, well, the reason Sarah isn't healed is because you haven't done something right. And Well, th yeah, that, that's where I <clears throat> end up going. Like, it, it seems like it's a whole bunch of religious principles that are sort of like being – applied by default. Let's go down through our checklist and yeah, make yeah. sure that I've covered every reverse legalism law. And I just end up going like, the devil's the one who's the legalist. God doesn't, God isn't like that. Yeah. And I just end up going like, I don't want to be, I don't want to be solely preoccupied um, with my little inner healing detective flashlight trying to, you know, break and cast out every last little thing where you're just going like, so much of what actually gets someone well and better. I even learned this in the midst of deliverance stuff. It's like, you know what? I got to do just as much building of people in truth as I do rebuking the enemy. 
And if the enemy is keeping that person from being able to understand some truth, go ahead, rebuke him. But the more truth gets in, the more awareness of their identity gets rooted and grounded in, in, in who Jesus is in them. The freer they seem to get, the stronger they seem to get, the less the devil seems to be much of an issue. Yeah, well, if the devil's tools are lying and deceit, then I do think as we talk about truth, as we get people to embrace what's true, then that defangs him. That takes away the yeah. power that he has to manipulate the way. And I think we ought to be far more aware of that, to me, where I'm believing something the enemy's whispering in my ear, then I am concerned that he's going to come up and take my, steal my car or, yeah. you know, create medical that, hardships in my home. This will probably get some email, but the, that's, that's one <laughs> of the Brad things. It's Brad. It's Brad. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's one of the things that I go like, when people end up throwing out the Bible because of, of the ways in which it has been wrongly shared to them, I just end up going like, that's never a good thing. I need to be, I need to be in that renewing my mind according to truth and how God sees me. And that the more I have that in me, the stronger I seem to be in in who he is and what I'm doing in the earth. And I just end up going like... And the more aware when you're being lied to. The more yeah. aware when something settles into your heart that is that cognitive that, dissonance yeah, thing we talk about. I'm trying to justify something. Not, where you're just going to go, right. hold it a minute. That has no sense of authenticity yeah. about it. And, and I just sort of feel like... It, it, it to me is it's it's really a mistake to go like oh because someone used it inappropriately that means I'm going to set it aside and dismiss it because it's it's like no no that's more precious than anything else I got in the house you know I mean it's like it that that's my that's a real touchstone to say all right God help me walk this thing out with clarity and and insight and you know when I look at the life of Jesus. It's like in the upper room, he wasn't giving him final orders on spiritual warfare. You know, I just sort of feel like the 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 upper room discourse, the last few things, he's, he's talking about their relationship with the father and oneness with each other and love. And you're just going like... Remaining in him. And, yeah, and I end yeah. up going like, okay, wonderful. Because in terms of priority and importance, it's like, you know, we're not supposed to be ignorant of the schemes, the wiles of the devil. So, yeah, did something to know, something to, to, to have in your quiver of a repertoire of awareness. But at the end of the day, I'm transformed by, you know, it's like we become what we behold. I want to have my eyes fixed on him, not the devil. And it seemed the more my eyes got fixed on that, the bigger he seemed to grow. And the less aware I was of, in, in, in a commensurate way, what God was up to. Yeah, so if we're living in more fear of him than we are growing trust in who God is and his affection for us, then you might want to adjust the back priorities. A bit. Yeah, because I don't, I don't look at... It's not an either or. Because I don't look either at God's whacking me for every little thing I do wrong, nor mm. the devil gets an open door with everything I do wrong. I, I don't look at either one of those two things. And I, and I look at... If I'm going to deal with something I have to do with the devil or demonic, I'm dealing with something. I'm, I'm dealing with a lie he's told, a place where he's made his presence known. I'm actually dealing with something that involves him. I'm not dealing in a generalized sense that the devil's outside my window trying to find a way to get in the house. You know, it's not this spiritual warfare out there somewhere in the hooky-jooky land. It's something that's more <laughs> concrete and it's saying what needs to be hooky jooky land. You didn't like that. <laughs> no, I did like yeah. that. It's going, well, okay, hooky jooky well, what, That's what's disturbed me, I think, a lot about the spiritual warfare stuff is that we're, we're, re land. we're rebuking things in the spiritual cosmos that have no practice in actually something that's happening here. Instead of, no, yeah, if there's yeah, a lie being it, told, if there's it, a way someone's being treated that expresses the darkness of, of evil, then, yeah, let's deal with those things. But let's not get into a, a normal need to pray some kind of mumbo jumbo to keep the devil at bay. We just there's a measure of unreality, it seems to me, that you know, when people are gonna move in, I'm gonna bind the principality over this city, and then I'm gonna do all this stuff, and then you know, somehow revival is just gonna gloriously break out with the no choice anointing on everybody. And you suddenly go like, okay. If that worked, we'd have had it by now. I, I know. <laughs> I know. And, yeah. and I, you know, I've been to enough of those. I know a lot of those people that write those books and you're just going like, okay, 
I, I, I get what you're trying to lay hold of, but I end up going like, you're trying to apply principles and theory that seems to be a bit devoid of the intimate conversation that would give you better wisdom on how to actually do that. Mm -hmm. And I'm going like, I don't think I'm going to tell my kids to just on principle, you start throwing hatchets at the moon. You just, you know, you, you, you go rebuke all every last little thing. It's <laughs> don't like, throw hatchets at the moon. You have neighbors, dude. They're going to come down somewhere. <laughs> that's, that's what we de derisively well, called it, throwing hatchets at the moon. Because um, I just end up going like, at the end of the day, people are, I can't so rebuke the devil that the individual I may be ministering to um doesn't have a choice in the matter of how they respond to God. Yeah. That that's far more relationship than it is I take authority over. Yeah. Now if 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 the enemy comes in a way where that person's will seems to be genuinely compromised and 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 they they're saying, "You know what? I want the the good that I want to do, I can't do. And the bad things I don't want to do, I find myself doing." Paul used language that says, that's not me, that's sin indwelling me. No, it's the devil made me do it. <laughs> the, the, there is a personification there that just says, okay, his will is compromised in that dimension. Jesus, how best do we bring healing there so that he is back in charge with his will intact as opposed to the sin which indwells him that's overpowering him? Yeah. And I think we're, rather than being in danger from that, which can happen, I think we're more in danger. Jesus tells the, 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 uh, the Pharisees, you are of your father, the devil, because you do what the devil does. He lies. He's a liar from the beginning, and you lie. I think we're more in danger of the lies we believe about us and God and other people the enemy's put in our life than we are some nefarious power sneaking in the front yeah, door. Yeah, I mean, I, I think he's, he's a religious spirit, if he's anything, the devil. Of and, some kind. Yeah. and he he brings an absolute twisting of condemnation to an awful lot of the words of God to people. You just end up going like, okay, that's not God's word doing that to you. That isn't what you're wanting. There's something twisting that. Yeah. And so and where, that's, where that's the case, then let's let's bring some kind of presence and power of God to help clarity and truth win. Yeah, he lies well, so figure out where he's lying to you. Get the truth in. Thank you for traveling with us today on The God Journey. You can join this conversation by visiting thegodjourney.com. 